front paper, you will find it all over the world, that tradition. Uh, we can go back to China, and eventually it went down the Silk Road, then moving on into Turkey as well as the Greeks, and then it moved on and into Europe. But in Mexico, it has kind of a very different origins in it. In pre-Columbian Mexico, cut paper figures were cut out of bark paper. This one is if you're having problems with your mother-in-law. You take it to the shaman with your problems, and he'll cut out this figure, and you put it in your family altar. And instead of becoming this awful figure, she will become very kind, very gentle for you. So these are, and these over here, uh, the different señores, like this one is a pineapple one. And if you want to grow pineapples, you go to the shaman, and he'll come cut out this little pineapple figure, and you go and put it in your field and has these prayers that you do, and you'll have a very successful crop of pineapples. With the Spanish conquest, uh, they uh, started um, the Manila Galleon, a ship that plied the Pacific. So all of these goods came in from the Orient into the port of Acapulco and traveled across Mexico to Veracruz on to Spain. But in between, they had fairs. Mexico City had a very large department store called El Parian, which was mainly selling all Oriental wares covered in tissue paper, rice paper, or silk paper. So tissue paper in Mexico is known as papel de china. And it also had the stencils for the clothing, for the lacquerware, for the porcelains, especially for the shoes, and we started cutting out those stencils. And now we have it in pulp paper, which is tissue paper. So that's why we cut out papel de china. Picado, why is it picado? It's punched out. But before that, it was done with scissors. It was not until the 19th century, in order to mass produce it, that you, you put on 50 sheets of paper together and then put your pattern on top, sew it all together, and then with chisels and hammers, you punch it in. That's your punch paper. That's a 19th century innovation there. And I don't do that because underneath you have to have a lead block, and that way your chisels don't just kind of bounce back. The problem is that the lead block, you have to melt it in your kitchen about twice a year and repour it. That's very dangerous. So I use an X-Acto knife. And now there's some paper cut artists that are using laser. So that's the beauty of art. It's always evolving, pushing the borders and moving, moving along.